Peace, love, prosperity, family. It's your girl, see you back at it again. Now, today in honor of Black History Month, we're going to take a trip through the National Museum of African American History and Culture in D.C. And you're in for a sweet treat. This video is loaded, packed with different historic, educational, and inspirational quotes, pictures, videos. Make sure you give it a subscribe if you're new to the channel and if you like the content, then share it. But other than that, let's go hit up the Smithsonian.
Please hold over a hand. Be recalled. In a little time now, amongst the four chain family, I found some of my own wish. Such a small wish. Yes. The sale of enslaved Africans and the profits made from their labor developed European nations and the world colonies. Men such as Henry Morris, a partner in one of the largest slave trading houses in colonial North America, transformed their profits into position and power. Lawrence sold thousands of enslaved Africans in the 1750s. He gained influence as one of the wealthiest colonists and later became a prominent member of the continent. Enslaved people, forcibly dispersed throughout the Atlantic world, created something more. New connections. The transatlantic slave trade was the largest forced migration in human history. The Atlantic world, the connection of four continents that shape the rim of the Atlantic Ocean, came into being based on the labor and forced movement of enslaved Africans. Atlantic world slavery. This separated indentured European and It created whiteness. And Africans became black in colonial North America. When Africans arrived in colonial North America, they encountered different environments and varying systems of slavery. From rocky coastlines to dense swamplands, natural forms, and expansive
their lives, even though they faced the harsh discrimination. Susie King Taylor, a union nurse, remembered, the first colored troops did not receive any pay. Finally, the government decided to give them a hand, but the men would not accept it. They wanted full pay and nothing. Joining the fight for freedom, women and children built schools, nursed the sick and wounded, and provided food and shelter, extending the groundwork for a free society.
are defenseless before our enemies. Give us the suffrage to secure justice for ourselves. Under President Andrew Johnson, there was no federal protection, and African Americans became targets of terrorism. Their symbols of freedom went up in flames. Outrage, Congress took control and divided the South into military districts, requiring those states to write new constitution and ratify the 13th Amendment, abolishing slavery. At the local level, African Americans continue to push for equal rights. They demanded civil rights and celebrated the passage of the 14th Amendment, which granted African American citizenship and equal protection under the law. And they pressed for the right to vote, which was secured in part by the 15th Amendment. With the vote, African Americans ushered in change and held elective office in every southern state. They instituted the South's first public school systems, fair labor laws, and debt relief. With more than 1,500 African American men in elected office, black voters recognized the impact of the political power they now held. They pressed to expand American freedoms in the House and in the Senate. Representative Robert B. Elliott, speaking to the House of Representatives, said, It is a matter of regret to me that it is necessary at this day that I should rise in the presence of an American Congress to advocate a bill which simply asserts equal rights and equal public privileges for all classes of American citizens. Uncomfortable with black citizenship, the Supreme Court began to chip away at equal rights. Terrorist organizations, like the Ku Klux Klan, waged war on African Americans and their political allies. They formed armed combat units to block polling places and fire on black voters. Many were murdered without consequence as they tried to cast their vote. Reconstruction came to an end when Democrats swept the South during the 1876 presidential election using fraud and violence. The Republicans did not fight back. They compromised. In exchange for the presidency, Rutherford B. Hayes agreed to withdraw federal troops from the South. This left African American voters defenseless against murder and fraud. Elections were stolen and black representation nationwide was stripped. Some African Americans resisted by leaving the South. Others stayed to nurture the communities they had built. African Americans continued to claim the right to belong. Each year, on Emancipation Day, they took to the streets. Together, black labor unions, churches, fraternal orders, and women's clubs organized parades to celebrate emancipation while calling attention to the promises made, but not yet fulfilled.
equality was fierce. And so was the determination of women fighting for justice. The cases which I handled in the South was the never popular in the communities in which we brought those cases. In a series of court battles in 1961 and 1962, NAACP attorney Constance Baker Motley won the admission of James Muir to the all-white University of Mississippi. Across the country, women continued to push for change. Gloria Richardson led a series of demonstrations for equality in her hometown of Cambridge, Maryland, where African Americans were shut out of good jobs, schools, and housing. Protesters faced bitter opposition from the white community. The governor imposed martial law and called in the National Guard, but Richardson would not be moved. Gloria, have you made peace with the National Guard? Well, uh, no, we actually haven't been at war with the National Guard. We've been at war with the problems here. They have to do what they have to do still, you know, and we still have to demonstrate. Richardson negotiated with Attorney General Robert Kennedy to end the violence and desegregate the city. But the battles were far from over. Across the country, desegregation efforts continued to meet violent opposition. We call upon you to break to end the climate of violence and hatred. We call upon you to put an end to police brutality. Mississippi sharecropper and voting rights activist Fannie Lou Hamer was severely beaten while in police custody. I began to scream and one white man got up and began to beat me in my head and tell me to hurt. When she told her story at the 1964 Democratic National Convention, she forced America to look squarely at the violence faced by African Americans trying to exercise their rights. 